where you are use what you have and do what you can for you are the one who can bring the change so be the cause of change hello everyone i'm your host seema choria and i welcome you all to another insightful session on weight principles joining me in conversation is my very keen educator of the day dr sonali kacharya sirohi she is founder head of sunrise learning foundation noida welcome to great principles ma'am we are very honored to have you with us Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Seema, and thank you for giving me this opportunity and this platform. Thank you once again. So, ma'am, you know, I'm sure my viewers would be very interested to know that what happened that a doctor turned into an educator. So, what is the story all about? And we are very excited to hear this fascinating change in your professional and personal life. So, you know, please talk to us about your journey as a mother, as an educator. It, you know. So, as some light about what keeps you going in this lovely profession where you are today. Um, thank you, thank you, Sima Ji. Thank you so much. So, um, as you mentioned, yes, um, a little bit about my personal and professional journey. So, I'm a mother of two amazing boys. The elder one is 13 year old. He's a roller skating champion, a painter, and a dynamic young man on the autism spectrum. And my younger son is eight years old and he's a musician and a badminton champ. And I am also the founder and head of this organization called Sunrise Learning Foundation that works to empower people with diverse needs like autism. And since you asked me about the journey, so going back as an educator, my journey started when I was doing MD from Ames, New Delhi. And that's the time when I first got a chance to teach medical graduation students. And I was loving it. It gave me a whole new universe. So there were three years of MD, MD <clears throat> followed by three years of senior residency. And they taught me the most unimaginable things about the human brain development and psychology, how stem cells work, brain neuroregeneration, and what factors work to affect the learning, the memory, and the brain development. In fact, I was blessed to receive some prestigious awards for this work on neurodevelopment, thanks to my mentors at Ames. I also got an opportunity to work more extensively on stem cell transplantation projects at the University of Melbourne. During this time, I also did a postgraduate diploma course in education administration from Symbiosis University, Pune, and God knows why. And when I think back, I say, actually, God knows everything. So as destiny would have it, while I was studying the human brain development in such great details at some of the world's best universities, probably God was planning to send someone in my life who needed just this background. So when I came back from Melbourne in 2008, and I conceived soon after, Purab, my elder son, was sent into our life on 12th March 2009. And as I started my dream career as an assistant professor, Purab was formally diagnosed with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, Moderate to Severe, written in bold. And it was difficult. It was very difficult to ride in two boats at that time with a full-time job and a child with special needs. And soon I realized that I needed to choose. And so at that time, I chose motherhood over my medical career. Thanks to Purab, I did some trainings to understand the neurobiology of autism in more details. And I kept learning with Purab from the therapists who, was, who were working with him in his early years. They were my pillars of support, thanks to them. Then I saw that some fellow parents were looking up to me for guidance, for counseling, and even for arranging playdates, for the initiative to teach social skills, for doing things that, uh, that, that were kind of helping all the children in the little club that I had created for them. And so the small puzzle pieces began to be, you know, put together. And before I knew, Sunrise Learning was started as a small holistic learning center as a small initiative to help not just my child, but some more. So currently, I'm honored and blessed to be the head of this organization that has a special school in Noida, 
with around 70 students who are physically enrolled in the center and another 100 plus students who are enrolled in various outreach programs. And we touch over 3,000 families through counseling support. Matt, you know, hearing you, I actually got goosebumps, you know. I know, I mean, I I was a mother of preemie and when I was told that I'm going to have a little baby, so many thoughts I was, you know, I was pondering about whether he'd be a normal child or not. God, God's grace, I mean, just a few days in an ICU, but I was shattered. It was not easy for me to accept that my child is so tiny and hung in wires, you know, you dream so much. Yes. I will be holding my child and you don't get to hold so I kind of sailed into my own journey here in you. And I mean, I had water in my eyes when you were describing having the first child. And, you know, but you are an inspiration that whatever God has given you, it's a special and how you will make it more worthwhile by helping out others. I think, you know, it. I when I was going through my journey, people all told me, you know, that Seema, you're a very strong girl and God bestows these people only. I'm like, ask me, ask my heart how it feels to see my little one. Yes. But, yes. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just getting a little more emotional today, going back to my days. So, but you know, ma'am, I can totally understand what kind of emotions you must have gone through. And with all that, pursuing the career, understanding everything and helping other parents, it's not easy. So you are an inspiration to so many parents out there for whom, you know, we, we have some with normal children. Just another mother. <laughs> no, just ma another mom, no. like you. You are different. You know, you're a very strong mother because, you know, you are not helping your own child. You're helping so many others out there. And everyone needs support. When I was in NICU, I was totally blank. There was no guidance from anyone how it is all about and I I I was also surrounded by mothers you know we all were helping each other that you know let's understand all these things so this is how you know that this is the power of working together as a team and reaching out to the goals and when you have you know we understand the I think and even you understand what is the meaning of one percent improvement only we can understand that Absolutely. one value of now that gives me goosebumps. One percent improvement. Wow. Yes, that's an yeah. accomplishment. Yes, indeed. indeed. I still remember cutting the cake for one gram weight gain. And everyone was calling you mad. Like, oh God, it's after 10 days, she has put on one gram. So I have to celebrate this. So, you know, we sell, we know the language of love actually much better. So today I'm talking to your fellow mother. So this conversation from not only the educators, it has reached to motherhood also. And this is something very close to my heart. So, you know, I'm sure today my viewers will have something very different takeaways from this uh, journey of yours. So to all my dear viewers, there is one thing for sure. Whatever life brings in, you know, accept it and be patient. Things will turn up if you are ready for it. This is what I have learned and this is what mom has learned. And look at her today. She's helping so many parents out there. And only we can understand how difficult it is to accept the reality first and then to try to bring out the best out of it. So hats off to you and to the entire organization doing this wonderful work. You are giving smiles to so many parents, you know. You are such a hope for so many out of you. Thank so you. moving ahead, ma'am, to the next question. Now you know that uh, there is so much discussion about inclusion, about having all the children in the same classroom. So what do you think? I mean, teaching children is not easy as it is. And you have a child with different needs. You need different kind of training because that child may sometimes show progress and may sometimes, you know, downgrade also. There would be no chance of progress at all. So ma'am, you also know what you want to do with your child. Educators ko, is certified management training ya children with special needs ko deal karne ki training because hum schools mein base dete hain. inclusion ke naam pe. there is a reservation also but what about these children yes. how they should be taught yeah. yes absolutely Hame training deni chahiye. we should have uh, as many educators as possible to be not just trained but also sensitized uh, you know, jab hum, um, as parents, when we have to do something, 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 we have to do 
समझ रहे होते हैं सो दैट अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज समथिंग दैट वी रियली नीड टू इनकल्केट इन ऑल द टीचर्स कि अगर वो जंप कर रहा है तो वो क्यों कर रहा है छोटी 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 चीजें सो एक बहुत बहुत फेमस सेइंग है इफ आई कॉन्ट लर्न द वे यू टीच प्लीज टीच द वे आई लर्न तो आप आप अपने पढ़ाने का तरीका बदल सकते हो जिससे कि मैं अच्छे से सीख पाऊं एंड दैट प्रोबेबली इज द क्रक्स ऑफ स्पेशल एजुकेशन इसीलिए उसको स्पेशल कहा जाता है सो द जेनरल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ टीचिंग माइट बी लिटल डिफरेंट वेरी लिटल डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द रेगुलर टीचिंग वेज but there is a lot of training that is needed to understand 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 the child or the adult who has special needs who has a diverse way of learning and doing things so we need to hear what the student cannot say we need to see what the student cannot show and we need to understand what the student cannot explain and a lot of training goes into uh, that so a lot of training is needed to understand practice and use the techniques and strategies meaningfully to individualize and customize those principles for each student so that they get tailor made to suit his or her needs and that is the real game changer otherwise the basic principles are pretty much the same so the sensitization and the training of course with certifications really add on a lot of value and a lot of understanding and insight into the educators who are trying to work with these children so uh, ma'am what do you think i mean is it right to have these children sitting in the you know regular classrooms with other children and when they are slow i mean you know we all talk about nahi equal opportunities honi chahiye but you know not let's Think from the point of the child when others are performing and he's not able to. I mean, doesn't he feel a little more demotivated? I mean, how do you take this? So uh, you know, um, when we meet one person with diverse needs, we have met only one person with diverse needs. It is such a huge spectrum of uh, needs and uh, uh, abilities that it is difficult to categorize and. club and put a generalized statement and say it is not a good idea to have them in the mainstream classrooms or it is a good idea to have them in the mainstream classrooms ultimately the objective is that each person should uh, realize his or her own full potential and if the potential is being realized in a classroom which is like a real world which is a mainstream classroom which is a regular classroom if the child is able to reach his or her potential and cope up with all that is happening in the class then that child does deserve that opportunity to be there with or without the extra support that might be needed to help him do or be his best but if a child seems to be overwhelmed or seems to be not being able to cope with the language inputs with the sensory environment with the social expectations uh, or with with the uh, academic expectations that the teacher or the peer group or the parents have then it is definitely unfair to force inclusion in a scenario that kind of brings the child to a point that he begins to feel i'm not able to do this this is not happening i won't be able to do this let me just show that i'm not interested let me escape so before that stage it is very important for the teachers and the parents to identify uh, the boundaries when the child is being overwhelmed or being meaningfully challenged and stimulated does that does that make sense Yeah, such a thing. I might be very rightly said, and I actually I appreciate the point where you said that ultimately the child should be able to perform without any you know support because till the child is at school level, we are teaching him what when he grows up, the world is open for him and he's on his own. He or she is on his on their own. So they 
somewhere or the other they will have to learn to be independent and i think you very rightly said this gives them an opportunity to face the world as it is so yes inclusion is the right form but provided we need to identify is it helping the child or not and if we think it's stretching then we should just you know pull him back so i think that would be the right thing to do and and by all means our emphasis and our focus should be on development of life skills for independence rather than bringing out the academic best of that child at that particular point if we are talking about the classroom scenario so um uh we we would definitely want the child to be able to do things independently in terms of activities of daily living his life skills rather than cope with a grade 6 or grade 7 or grade 8 uh, academic pressure so the focus should be on independence and on life skills way more than teaching academics absolutely completely agree with you ma'am you know that should that is the right thing that you have shared here so we're moving ahead to my next question you know even the one person improvement is a huge award for you this i can understand very well so you know your every day there are so many moments when you you jump with joy that oh my child is able to do this so flawlessly so tell me which for according to you for you and your team would be the best award in the field of education um for um the best award i think so far is the very fact that all the barriers and all the challenges that we have come across as parents and as a professional and as a team have not stopped us from being who we are we are the change makers and we are going to be the change that we want to see all around us probably feels like a great reward the the resilience with which we have been going and for the school the greatest reward is when the students bloom when they realize their full potential and literally we have moments of jumping with joy every day because we know the beauty of those little accomplishments that that we get as medals and trophies every day so as soon as they begin to showcase their abilities after crossing the barriers of their own limitations their own differences that is the real reward because the daily task that you and me uh, we take for granted could be the greatest everyday struggle for someone um, who has special needs so uh, accomplishing a simple task like being able to brush your teeth independently could be a real a real huge reward and there have been so many acknowledgments for our work and feel so grateful um there was an international school award uh, for phenomenal parental engagement that was uh, that was lovely motivation similarly there was a national school award for the best school principals for special needs so yes these come as a um, breeze of motivation uh, having me here on a platform like this is a huge motivation thank you so much for uh, having me over giving me this honor so thank you for all the motivation and these are all the little rewards that we you know uh, crave for you know ma'am when you do good goodness follows you and uh, you are someone who is helping out these children and ensuring that they are well they are the part of the system and they are on themselves you know so this this feeling in itself great that you know i am independent ask these children what does it mean and you will understand that how important it is to be independent what it takes to be and certainly your life is full of rewards and i congratulate you for all the achievements and you guys are truly resilient in every manner because handling kids at home you know brings turmoil in the house and i mean <laughs> hats off you're doing i imagine the situation and it takes a lot of lot of patience you know with kids we have to explain three times and we get irritated and here the cycle is never ending you have to just go on and on and on and that then one day you see so you know so to all my dear viewers we all have to you know applaud these special needs teachers special needs educators they are wonderful human beings and in fact they are angels in the form of humans so a big applause for all the special educators out there and to from all the parents all the viewers and from all of us you guys are amazing and always keep doing this wonderful work and bring smiles to so many people out there 
So on this Thank lovely you. note of <laughs> applauding all my educators, we have reached to a very interesting segment of the show, which is called rapid fire round. So, ma'am, here you have to answer me in one word or a statement. Okay. So here, you know, we will not be asking you much about the work. Uh, rather, we'll be asking you something about your fun facts. All right. So coming up to the uh, my first question, uh, which is your favorite extracurricular activity? Music. Okay. I, I to my sing and I play, play yeah. some instruments. Perfect. Wonderful. So, uh, what is your favorite cuisine? Anything that's made at home, and I don't have to cook it. <laughs> I think we share that same. Even I am a foodie, but I don't want to cook. <laughs> Coming up to my next question. Which is your favorite book and author? Um, there's a very beautiful book that I've read. Ten things every child with autism wished you knew. And the author is Ellen Nordbaum. And she's a mom of two um, amazing kids. And I love this book because it speaks for the child, for the person on the autism spectrum. So uh, that person, this, per this book is written in first, uh, you know, uh, it, it is written from directly from a person on the autism spectrum. And that person shouts out to us about all the 10 things that he or she wishes that we all knew. So I love this book. Coming up to my next question, this is a little tough one. A lie that you have said to your family. A lie that I've said to my family. Uh, many a times uh, when I'm not, not feeling great about some things, I say, oh, yes, I'm absolutely great. And uh, this, this lie kind of, you know, it's like it works like the red lipstick for me. So even if even if uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, in that energy zone, it kind of gives me the energy back. When I say, oh, yes, I'm great. Uh, law of attraction. I, I say things that I want um, to bring in into my life. And that works for me. Even if it could be a lie, I, I don't mind attracting good things into my life by saying it. <laughs> so, uh, ma'am, you know, I think this lie each Every mother, I mean, every working mother must be saying every day before, after reaching home, you're so exhausted. But again, you're all set to entertain kids or your own kids after looking after so many of others. So this is the thing that we all do. And I think we should do this. Keep doing this. Because any lie which brings yes. happiness on others' face is never a lie. It's always good. Yes. Okay. So moving up to the last question of this segment. What is one quality that every teacher must possess? Um, I feel every teacher should should have just one single ability uh, to be able to build a connect with the student. So if the student seems to be in a bubble, inside the bubble, um, so a teacher should have the ability to uh, enter the bubble rather than trying to pull the child out of that bubble into this world, the teacher should should just have the ability to enter that bubble and let that person know, I'm not here to judge you or to change you. I'm here to be with you and to enjoy what you enjoy the most because I accept you for who you are. I love you for who you are. And once that acceptance begins to... Um, begins to get imbibed by the student the student himself walks out of that bubble with the teacher so uh, i think all of us as teachers whether we are teaching uh, regular children or we are teaching children who have diverse needs uh, need to be able to express that ability that i am here to be with you and to enjoy what you love doing the ability um, to build a connect yeah, so connect is very, very important, you rightly said. So in any profession, I mean, especially when you're teaching these young people, you need to connect to them so that, you know, they are opening up to you. They are sharing what they're getting and what not. Yes, very rightly said, Matt, that connect is very important. So, you know, wherever in whichever profession we are, we all need to connect. But especially when we are dealing with young lives, 
this connection is much more important because then you, they trust you and once they start trusting you the bond is established so it was great to know you in this segment ma'am now we have reached to the last question of the show which is called the viewers choice question so my viewer says that there are so many learning programs out there and you know as the childs are unique we have different pedagogies for them so how can we improve the existing learning programs and make them child friendly okay so um thanks for bringing up this question uh, i feel many of the existing educational and therapeutic intervention programs all across the world many of them are still based on deficits so they are deficit based approaches so uh, they are based on what is missing let's provide that so if a child has difficulty in speech let's give speech therapy if a child struggles in writing let's give intervention for writing and fine motor skills i however really really feel the need to exercise holistic intervention in a conducive sensory friendly social environment to encourage holistic growth you know intervention that works on the whole child that looks at the whole child gives the child an opportunity to build his or her own skills beyond the limitations that the child is struggling with just like it's it's like let's take the example of a little plant we don't ever pull the roots of a plant to make them bigger or we never pull the leaves to make them bigger and healthier we need to give the plant water sunlight and a rich soil that has enough substance to nurture the plant then the size the shape the color of the plant doesn't matter the plant will bloom to its fullest if it's given the given the rich environment that it needs exactly we need to give the student the environment that nurtures the the whole person to develop his or her domains to the fullest and for this child i feel that the richest soil is a healthy happy social environment with loads of play and the sunlight is acceptance and unconditional love and water is the skill training and the direct intervention and if you are able to give all this there is no stopping the child and then i think forward is forward speed does not matter so uh, you know um, i think uh, the way you explain relating it to the plant it kind of you know there's an explanation for the parents also the parents of all the children with different needs it's very important to accept the reality we know it's hard but the late the open our eyes it will be difficult for the child because you know intervention at an early stage will help the child to develop better and we heard man you know it requires different kind of expert it requires different skill set to help this child to bloom you know because he has different kind of needs and we as parents aren't aware how to train these children because we are not trained ourselves so you know it's all together you know a collective responsibility though we cannot train us completely but we can learn from the teachers and help the child ensure the early intervention and see that our child blooms just like any other flower so you um, thank you so much for sharing such beautiful thoughts and bringing out the motherly feelings and you know the, about the duty of the educators today my heart is thumping with gratitude and respect for you you know because teaching is already a noble profession and what you are doing is uh, you know something you are doing for god's favored people so this is you know something very incredible and uh, bow down to you all i can say and uh, thank, you. thank you thank you i bow down to my students every day because like i said what what feels like a regular task for us is a huge mountain everest that they climb each day to accomplish that task so they are the real the real warriors and we bow down to them. so to all my dear viewers whatever you i've shared that i think this is the biggest lesson that i have learned because there is so much that you keep on complaining but you know start appreciating what you have and you will see that life is completely beautiful and different and you become the better version of yourself once you do that so this note on this lovely note i would end today's session and i would request all the educators to ensure that you know teach every day your child to just appreciate whatever has been granted to you and you will start loving yourself and when you do that 
world is more welcoming for you so thank you so much sunali ma'am once again for this lovely conversation very close to my heart i thoroughly enjoyed every answer you shared there was so much learning and i'm sure my viewers have got a lot of things today thank you thank you thank you thank you once again thank you seema ma'am thank you